My first guest, talk show legend and my friend, Ricky Lake, never thought she'd find love again after the tragic loss of her second husband. But Ricky recently found it in an unlikely place and is now engaged to the man of her dreams. After years of success in front of the camera, the Emmy winner is finding renewed purpose as a filmmaker with very important documentaries like The Business of Being Born and her latest, The Business of Birth Control. Ricky Lake joins us from her home in California. Welcome! So great to see you, even virtually. Thank you for having yeah. me. You look beautiful as ever. Oh, Ricky, you're so beautiful. I don't want to say so fine, because <laughs> I don't want to exploit you that way. Cameron, the last time I was with you, I had just shaved my head. So, right. I mean, it was I right before it. the pandemic. And now it's grown out. I did it myself. It's a, I just got a haircut. I'm I working like with it, but I have it. hair. So You're I'm giving Anderson grateful. Cooper a run for his money, Silver Fox. <laughs> I like it. I, you know what? I'm embracing my 50s. I'm embracing where I'm at. And I cannot believe my life feels like a movie, you know, finding love during COVID yeah. of all times. To, you know, it's been a really, really amazing year. Uh, you know what? Your heart is so real, which is why I was so just happy to hear about this engagement. Thank you so much. It was just a few years ago. I know that you could not have imagined finding love again. Uh, you lost your second husband, Christian Evans. It was 2017. And I know the space you... I can't say I know it. I, I know you. And I know that that space had to be so heavy. What was it like for you then? It, it, it was two parts. Because partly, you know, he was suffering from bipolar and mental illness. So it was living through those dramatic, psychotic breaks which were so traumatizing. And then ultimately he ended his life and it'll be five years in February. And there were days that I could not get out of bed. I did not want to be here. I mean, I can't say I was on the verge of taking my life, but I was in true despair. And I didn't know when I would find joy again, if I would find joy again, but I'm a really joyful person. I'm, a, I'm an optimist. And I know that Christian would want me to be happy. And then when I least expected it, when I wasn't looking during a COVID walk, I ran into a mutual friend and she set us up on a blind date. And uh, it was not love at first sight. <laughs> it was months later. It was during <laughs> Halloween on a blue moon. And I actually saw him for the first time. And he's actually my perfect partner. And we are so grateful. We're both for empty nesters. And uh... <laughs> that, you know what? I, I love it, but a part of this story, you believe, still involves Christian, that somehow, miraculously, Christian led you to your fiancé, Ross. How did that happen? I mean, I believe it, and no one else can prove me otherwise, but Christian was very spiritual. We had a deep, deep connection and a soul contract, and I took care of him while he was here in human form. And now that he has crossed over, I believe in every cell of my body that he brought this man, or he helped orchestrate this man coming into my life. Wow. He wanted me to be happy. He wanted me to have pleasure. And I feel it all the time. I feel his presence. I feel his support. And Ross feels it too. Ross, I think, is less spiritual in that way. Woo-woo, you know? But <laughs> Christian was very powerful, and I think he's he's absolutely looking after me. I love that. Milo is 24, Owen 20. Your baby's now adults. How do they feel seeing you find love that you thought would be lost forever? I think they're happy for me, you know? I And I think... It's a, it's a beautiful relationship that they will hopefully emulate. You know, this is a love-filled, healthy, adult, grounded. I call it grounded euphoria. Oh. You know, I'm in this state of just, I feel bliss. And, 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 and he loves me exactly the way I am for the first time, I think. You know, in, in other relationships, like with Christian, I was a caretaker. I was the provider. I, it was like there was this imbalance. And, and Ross and I have this sort of equal partnership and this mutual respect and we really have a good time. We're like, we say we're Benjamin Button, we're aging backwards. You know, I like <laughs> that. I like it. <laughs> you know, you're, you're busy falling in love under the pale moonlight, but you're also <laughs> doing, as I said, important documentary film work. You have the documentary of the business of birth control. I think we have a clip. Let's play it. When I discovered that 
I can't get pregnant every single day of my cycle. It totally blew my mind. And it, I felt, in my case, it really put the power in my hands. To me, the most feminist approach to the conversation around contraceptives, period, is options. And I think if young women were learning about their cycles, not from a contraceptive lens, but from an empowerment lens, we could see a lot of different things happening. You are really <laughs> diving into these, these documentaries in an unapologetic fashion. With this one in particular, Ricky, what do you want people to take away from this one? Well, I want women to really consider all, oh shoot, my doorbell is ringing. Oh my goodness. Excuse me. <laughs> Wait a minute. Ricky Lake, who made the doorbell famous on her talk show. Exactly. Oh my. <laughs> I'm not expecting anyone. I wonder who that is. Uh, Come on in. I'm like, who's coming in? I don't know. DNA test. Ricky, really? <laughs> okay, now that the doorbell has rang on the woman who made the doorbell surprise famous on daytime talk, back to this documentary. <laughs> This, this film is about empowering women with the information. And there's so much more to consider when you only have five minutes with your provider. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of pros and cons and we want more options. We want better birth control. Well, bravo on this important film work that you've been doing and continuing. And congratulations on finding love when you could have given in to it being lost, or at least believing that it was lost. My best to the fiance. He's a lucky man. Thank you.